Goliath is described in the biblical book of Samuel as a Philistine giant defeated by the young David in single combat. The story signified Saul's unfitness to rule, as Saul himself should have fought for the kingdom of Israel. The phrase, David and Goliath, or David versus Goliath, has taken on a more popular meaning, denoting an underdog situation, a contest where a smaller, weaker opponent faces a much bigger, stronger adversary. Biblical account The Goliath narrative in 1 Samuel chapter 17 Saul and the Israelites are facing the Philistines in the Valley of Elah. Twice a day for forty days, morning and evening, Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, comes out between the lines and challenges the Israelites to send out a champion of their own to decide the outcome in single combat, but Saul is afraid. David, bringing food for his elder brothers, hears that Goliath has defied the armies of God and of the reward from Saul to the one that defeats him, and accepts the challenge. Saul reluctantly agrees and offers his armor, which David declines, taking only his staff, sling and five stones from a brook. David and Goliath confront each other, Goliath with his armor and javelin, David with his staff and sling. The Philistine cursed David by his gods. But David replies. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that God saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is God's, and he will give you into our hand. David hurls a stone from his sling and hits Goliath in the center of his forehead. Goliath falls on his face to the ground, and David cuts off his head. The Philistines flee and are pursued by the Israelites. As far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. David puts the armor of Goliath in his own tent and takes the head to Jerusalem, and Saul sends Abner to bring the boy to him. The king asks whose son he is, and David answers, I am the son of your servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. Topic. Composition of the Book of Samuel and the Goliath narrative The books of Samuel, together with the books of Joshua, Judges and Kings, make up a unified history of Israel which biblical scholars call the Deuteronomistic history. The first edition of the history was probably written at the court of Judah's king Josiah late 7th century and a revised second edition during the exile 6th century, with further revisions in the post-exilic period. Traces of this can be seen in the contradictions and illogicalities of the Goliath story. To take a few examples, David turns from Saul's adult shield bearer into a child herding sheep for his father. Saul finds it necessary to send for him when, as the king's shield bearer, he should already be beside his royal master, and then has to ask who David is, which sits strangely with David's status at his court. The Goliath story is made up of base narrative with numerous additions made probably after the exile. Original story The Israelites and Philistines face each other, Goliath makes his challenge to single combat. David volunteers to fight Goliath. David defeats Goliath, the Philistines flee the battlefield. Additions David is sent by his father to bring food to his brothers, hears the challenge, and expresses his desire to accept. Details of the account of the battle. Saul asks who David is, and he is introduced to the king through Abner. Topic. Textual considerations Topic. Goliath's height Goliath's stature as described in various ancient manuscripts varies. The oldest manuscripts, the Dead Sea Scrolls text of Samuel, the 1st century historian Josephus, and the 4th century Septuagint manuscripts, all give his height as four cubits and a span. 6 feet 9 inches or 2.06 meters, whereas the Masoretic text gives this as 6 cubits and a span, 9 feet 9 inches or 2.97 meters. Scholars generally agree that the shorter height found in the Greek text is older and more original. Topic. Goliath and Saul The underlying purpose of the story of Goliath is to show that Saul is not fit to be king and that David is. Saul was chosen to lead the Israelites against their enemies, but when faced with Goliath he refuses to do so. Goliath is a giant, and Saul is a very tall man. 
Saul's exact height is not given, but he was a head taller than anyone else in all Israel 1 Samuel 9 verse 2, which implies he was over 6 feet meters tall and supposed to be the obvious challenger for Goliath, yet, David is the one who eventually defeated him. Also, Saul's armor and weaponry are apparently no worse than Goliath's and David, of course, refuses Saul's armor in any case. David declares that when a lion or bear came and attacked his father's sheep, he battled against it and killed it, but Saul has been cowering in fear instead of rising up and attacking the threat to his sheep i.e. Israel. <laughs> Elhanan and Goliath 2 Samuel chapter 21 verse 19 tells how Goliath the Gittite was killed by Elhanan the son of Jar Oraim, the Bethlehemite. According to Baruch Halperin, most likely, storytellers displaced the deed from the otherwise obscure Elhanan onto the more famous character, David. The 4th century BC First Chronicles explains the second Goliath by saying that Elhanan slew Lami the brother of Goliath, constructing the name Lami from the last portion of the word, Bethlehemite, Beit Halami. And the King James Bible adopted this into 2 Samuel chapter 21 verses 18 to 19, although the Hebrew text at this point makes no mention of the word brother. Topic: <laughs> Goliath and the Greeks. The armor described in 1 Samuel chapter 17 appears typical of Greek armor of the 6th century BCE rather than of Philistines armor of the 10th century. Narrative formulae such as the settlement of battle by single combat between champions has been thought characteristic of the Homeric epics the Iliad, rather than of the ancient Near East. The designation of Goliath as a wise Habinium, man of the in-between. A long-standing difficulty in translating 1 Samuel chapter 17 appears to be a borrowing from Greek, man of the metaikmian, i.e. the space between two opposite army camps where champion combat would take place. A story very similar to that of David and Goliath appears in the Iliad, written circa 760–710 BCE, where the young Nestor fights and conquers the giant Eruthalion. Each giant wields a distinctive weapon. An iron club in Eruthalion's case, a massive bronze spear in Goliath's, each giant, clad in armor, comes out of the enemy's massed array to challenge all the warriors in the opposing army, in each case the seasoned warriors are afraid, and the challenge is taken up by a stripling, the youngest in his family Nestor is the twelfth son of Neleus, David the seventh or eighth son of Jesse. In each case an older and more experienced father figure Nestor's own father, David's patron Saul tells the boy that he is too young and inexperienced, but in each case the young hero receives divine aid and the giant is left sprawling on the ground. Nestor, fighting on foot, then takes the chariot of his enemy, while David, on foot, takes the sword of Goliath. The enemy army then flees, the victors pursue and slaughter them and return with their bodies, and the boy hero is acclaimed by the people. Topic. Goliath's name Tel es Safi, the biblical Gath and traditional home of Goliath, has been the subject of extensive excavations by Israel's Bar Ilan University. The archaeologists have established that this was one of the largest of the Philistine cities until destroyed in the 9th century BC, an event from which it never recovered. A potsherd discovered at the site, and reliably dated to the 10th to mid-9th centuries BC, is inscribed with the two names, ALWT and WLT, while the names are not directly connected with the biblical Goliath, Glyte. They are etymologically related and demonstrate that the name fits with the context of late 10th, early 9th century BC Philistine culture. The name, Goliath. Itself is non-Semitic and has been linked with the Lydian king Aliots, which also fits the Philistine context of the biblical Goliath story. A similar name, Uliot, is also attested in Karyon inscriptions. Aaron Mayer, director of the excavation, comments, Here we have very nice evidence that the name Goliath appearing in the Bible in the context of the story of David and Goliath, is not some later literary creation. Later traditions Jewish 
According to the Babylonian Talmud, Soda 42b, Goliath was a son of Orpah, the sister-in-law of Ruth, David's own great-grandmother, Ruth Obed Jesse David. Ruth Rabba, a Haggadic and homiletic interpretation of the Book of Ruth, makes the blood relationship even closer, considering Orpah and Ruth to have been full sisters. Orpah was said to have made a pretense of accompanying Ruth but after forty paces left her. Thereafter she led a dissolute life. According to the Jerusalem Talmud Goliath was born by polyspermy, and had about one hundred fathers, the Talmud stresses Goliath's ungodliness, his taunts before the Israelites included the boast that it was he who had captured the Ark of the Covenant and brought it to the Temple of Dagon, and his challenges to combat were made at morning and evening in order to disturb the Israelites in their prayers. His armor weighed 60 tons, according to Rabbi Hanina, 120, according to Rabbi Abba Bar Kahana, and his sword, which became the sword of David, had marvelous powers. On his death it was found that his heart carried the image of Dagon, who thereby also came to a shameful downfall. In Pseudo-Philo, believed to have been composed between 135 BC and 70 AD, David picks up seven stones and writes on them his father's name, his own name, and the name of God, one name per stone. Then, speaking to Goliath, he says, Hear this word before you die, were not the two women from whom you and I were born, sisters? And your mother was Orpah and my mother Ruth. After David strikes Goliath with the stone he runs to Goliath before he dies and Goliath says, Hurry and kill me and rejoice. And David replies, Before you die, open your eyes and see your slayer. Goliath sees an angel and tells David that it is not he who has killed him but the angel. Pseudo Philo then goes on to say that the angel of the Lord changes David's appearance so that no one recognizes him, and thus Saul asks who he is. <laughs> Islam Goliath appears in Chapter 2 of the Quran 2 in the narrative of David and Saul's battle against the Philistines. Called Jalit in Arabic, Jalwit, Goliath's mention in the Quran is concise, though it remains a parallel to the account in the Hebrew Bible. Muslim scholars have tried to trace Goliath's origins, most commonly with the Amalekites. Goliath, in early scholarly tradition, became a kind of byword or collective name for the oppressors of the Israelite nation before David. Muslim tradition sees the battle with the Philistines as a prefiguration of Muhammad's Battle of Badr, and sees Goliath as parallel to the enemies that Muhammad faced. <laughs> Adaptations American actor Ted Cassidy portrayed Goliath in the TV series Greatest Heroes of the Bible in 1978. Italian actor Luigi Montefiore portrayed this nine-foot-tall giant in Paramount's 1985 live-action movie King David as part of a flashback. This movie includes the King of the Philistines saying, Goliath has challenged the Israelites six times and no one has responded. It's then on the seventh time that David meets his challenge. The PBS series Wishbone featured Goliath in its first season episode, Little Big Dog. Big Idea's popular VeggieTales episode was called, Dave and the Giant Pickle, where Phil Vischer voiced Goliath. In 1972, Toho and Subaraya Productions collaborated on a movie called Daguerreau vs. Goliath, which follows the story relatively closely but recasts the main characters as kaiju. In 1975, Israeli band Pugi release a song called Goliath on the album Zafuf Bausen, loosely and humorously based on the story. Suzanne Vega's song Rock in This Pocket song of David on the album 99.9 .9 Degrees Fahrenheit is based on the story. In 2005, Lightstone Studios released a direct-to-DVD movie musical titled One Smooth Stone, which was later changed to David and Goliath. It is part of the Lycan the Scriptures now just Lycan series of movie musicals on DVD based on scripture stories. Thurl Bailey, a former NBA basketball player, was cast to play the part of Goliath in this film. In 2009, NBC aired Kings which has a narrative loosely based on the biblical story of King David, but set in a kingdom that culturally and technologically resembles the present-day United States. The part of Goliath is portrayed by a tank, which David destroys with a shoulder-fired rocket launcher. Goliath was portrayed by Conan Stevens in the 2013 TV miniseries The Bible. 
Italian Goliath film series 1960 to 1964 The Italians used Goliath as an action superhero in a series of biblical adventure films peplums in the early 1960s. He possessed amazing strength, and the films were similar in theme to their Hercules and Massiste movies. After the classic Hercules became a blockbuster sensation in the film industry, the 1959 Steve Reeves film Terror dei Barbari Terror of the Barbarians was retitled Goliath and the Barbarians in the United States. After Joseph E. Levine claimed the sole right to the name of Hercules, the film was so successful at the box office, it inspired Italian filmmakers to do a series of four more films featuring a beefcake hero named Goliath, although the films were not really related to each other. The 1960 Italian film David and Goliath starring Orson Welles was not one of these, since that movie was a straightforward adaptation of the biblical story. The four titles in the Italian Goliath series were as follows Goliath contro i giganti, Goliath against the giants 1960, starring Brad Harris Goliath e la schiava ribelle, Goliath and the rebel slave aka the tyrant of Lydia vs. The Son of Hercules 1963, starring Gordon Scott Golia e il Cavalier Mascherato, Goliath and the Masked Rider a.k.a. Hercules and the Masked Rider 1964, starring Alan Steele Golia a la Conquista di Baghdad, Goliath at the Conquest of Baghdad a.k.a. Goliath at the Conquest of Damascus, 1964 starring Peter Lepust The name Goliath was later inserted into the film titles of three other Italian muscle man movies that were retitled for distribution in the United States in an attempt to cash in on the Goliath craze, but these films were not originally made as Goliath movies in Italy. Both Goliath and the Vampires 1961 and Goliath and the Sins of Babylon 1963 actually featured the famed superhero Massiste in the original Italian versions, but American distributors didn't feel the name Massiste had any meaning to American audiences. Goliath and the Dragon 1960 was originally an Italian Hercules movie called The Revenge of Hercules. Topic: <laughs> Modern usage of David and Goliath In modern usage, the phrase, David and Goliath, has taken on a secular meaning, denoting an underdog situation, a contest where a smaller, weaker opponent faces a much bigger, stronger adversary. If successful, the underdog may win in an unusual or surprising way. It is arguably the most famous underdog story. Theology professor Leonard Greenspoon, in his essay, David vs. Goliath in the Sports Pages, explains that. Most writers use the story for its underdog overtones the little guy wins. Less likely to show up in newsprint is the contrast that was most important to the biblical authors, David's victory shows the power of his God, while Goliath's defeat reveals the weakness of the Philistine deities." The phrase is widely used in news media to succinctly characterize underdog situations in many contexts without religious overtones. Recent headlines include, sports. Hay relishes underdog role in David and Goliath fight with Nikolai Valuev. The Guardian, business. On internet, David and Goliath battle over instant messages. The New York Times, science. David and Goliath, how a tiny spider catches much larger prey. Science Daily, politics. Descent in Cuba, David and Goliath. The Economist, social justice. David and Goliath Saga Brings Cable to Skid Row. Los Angeles Times. See also An Army of Davids, Battle of Ain Jalot, Battle of Goliath Well, David Plates. Notes Topic References Topic Citations Topic Bibliography Campbell, Anthony F., O'Brien, Mark A. two thousand Unfolding the Deuteronomistic History Fortress Press ISBN 9781451413000 Hamilton, Ed. 
Johnson, Benjamin J. M. 2015. Reading David and Goliath in Greek and Hebrew, A Literary Approach. More Seabic. ISBN 9783161540375. Johnson, William R. 2000. Goliath. In Friedman, David Noel, Myers, Alan C. Eerdmans Dictionary of the Bible. Eerdmans. ISBN 9789053565242. Johnson, William R. 2010. The Deuteronomic History and the Book of Chronicles. Society of Biblical Literature. ISBN 9781589835175. Johnson, William R. 2010. The East Face of Helicon. Clarendon Press. ISBN 9780191591381. Johnson, William R. 2010. Media related to David and Goliath at Wikimedia Commons. <laughs>